So chapter 33, part two, sorry, is going to be about um, coelomate invertebrates. So what that means is they're going to have a true body cavity called a coelom. They're going to be the first ones that evolved, and most of them live in the ocean, um, but you're going to have some that are on land. And so this is a big group. Mollusks really mean soft-bodied. And so this is going to include scallops, clams, snails, oysters, mussels, all of those types of things that do have a soft body most of the time inside some type of a shell. Um, so these guys are huge, huge, huge group, and they can be beneficial and they can be harmful beneficial. We can use them as a food source. A lot of them are very tasty. And we can use them for economical purposes like pearls and selling seashells. Um, they can be harmful in the fact that they can bore into wood and break apart wood. So that could break apart docks and boats. Um, snails can be extremely detrimental to crops if they get a snail outbreak or something. And the other thing with snails is that, as you'll learn, they act as a host to a lot of parasites that we're going to talk about. Um, so that's going to be the pros and cons to this group. Now, as far as their body plan, um, I'm going to show you a general picture and then um, that'll kind of help us to go through this one. So if I can get the PowerPoint to come up, I can show you this on this next slide. There we go. Okay, so this is going to be the basic body plan of a mollusk. So um, you've got this internal area called the visceral mass, and that's going to contain all of the organs and such. And then they usually are going to have a shell, and just below that shell you can see this blue line, that's called the mantle. The mantle's job is to secrete the shell, except if you're talking about like a snail or something on land, the mantle actually has been modified into kind of like a lung. Um, they're going to have the foot, which is going to be this big, meaty, muscular part that they use for locomotion most of the time or for opening shells or something like that. Um, they're going to have gills. Now, just looking at this picture, what type of circulatory system do you think these guys have? Um, I'll give you a hint. They have a heart. They have vessels. But look what happens to the vessels here. They just dump out into the body. So that's an open circulatory system. Except for squids and octopi, Everything else in this group is going to have an open circulatory system. And then over here, you can see the mouth actually has this tongue-like structure called a radula. And here's a close-up of it. And it has these little chitinous teeth on it that it can use to scrape algae and stuff like that off. Um, once again, you can see sort of nerves, but no real brain. Okay, now let's talk about some of the parts a little bit closer up. Here's a picture of the radula. So like I said, that radula is like a tongue that has teeth on it, and it uses it to scrape algae off of rocks and, in this case, glass in the picture, right? Um, and now we're going to talk about their larval forms. So they are going to have a smaller larval form than you see here, but what you see here is a little bit more advanced, and this is called a veliger. And the veliger is super cool. Um, you can see the start of a shell, and then they have this big, big foot that, once again, is going to act like a parachute so that they don't sink very far in the water column and they don't have to keep swimming up. Okay, so now we're going to get into the different classes. First class is going to be called polyplacophora. Good times. Okay, let's take this apart. Poly means many. Placo means plates. So if you look at this, their um, shell is divided into these eight pieces of plates. So that's where the name comes from. Um, so this is a group of organisms called chitons. And you find these a lot in tide pools. And um, sometimes they're as tiny as your pinky nail. Other times they're bigger than your hand. Um, not really tasty or anything like that, but um, they do play an important role in tide pools. Um, controlling algae and that type of thing. The next group is going to be called gastropoda, and that literally is going to translate to stomach. Gastro is stomach. Poda means foot. And so this is going to be snails and slugs. So snails obviously have a shell. Slugs do not. And um, these guys are going to be called gastropoda because what happens to them is something during their development called torsion. Torsion is going to be an unequal development of muscles, and that actually causes the shell to have that twisting shape to it. And what happens as a result is the stomach flips over to be on top of the foot. So that's where gastropoda comes from. Unfortunately, their anus is right here, so they're basically pooping on their heads their whole life, so I wouldn't want to come back as one of them. Anyway, they've got that big foot. Then you can see that they've got these stalks that are going to have little um, eye-like structures at the end of it. And that's basically going to be them. 
Um, so here I've just got some pictures of some prettier ones that you can see. Um, this is going to be something called a flamingo tongue. Beautiful little guy, right? And what's crazy is this colorful part here is actually its foot. And um, if you go up to these guys and you rub them, um, it actually will retract its foot. And then they're really boring looking. That's their shell. So just kind of interesting. Another interesting one are these guys called sea slugs. They're gastropods as well. And um, these guys can be extremely poisonous because what they do is they eat other things that are poisonous and instead of getting the toxins killing them they actually incorporate the toxins into their tissues and they use those to make themselves more poisonous so as they get older they bioaccumulate those toxins and become more poisonous so that's kind of neat okay the next class is going to be called bivalvia and bivalvia is going to literally translate to two doors, right? So bi is two, valvia is doors. And if you look at that um, extremely huge scallop there, it does have two shells that are hinged together. So that's where the name comes from. So this is going to include um, scallops, oysters, clams, mussels, any of those that have the two shells that are kind of hinged together. Um, they can be a beautiful, beautiful group as well. I love showing people this next one. Um, these are called trichadnic clams. And all of this colorful stuff on their foot is actually dinoflagellates, which is a protist. And um, oh, I used to have these in my saltwater tank. They are gorgeous. It looks like a jewel case when you look at them. Um, very expensive, though, and um, it was like a crack habit for me. It was bad news. Bad news. I owed the fish guy a lot of money. Okay, now let's look at their body plan. One thing that they have that's pretty neat, once again, they have that visceral mass. They're going to have the foot um, and all of that stuff. But um, here's their gills, and these guys are going to be filter feeders. And so they have this little siphon. Here's the X current siphon um, right here, and here's their in current siphon. And those can get to be a little bit elongated. Now, if you think about these guys, their movement, not so great, right? They're not going to be able to move from place to place very easily. And so um, what they need to do a lot of times is hide from things that are trying to eat them. So what they'll do is kind of bury themselves under the sand, but if they're filter feeders, they need clean water to breathe. And so what they'll do is stick that little siphon up like a little snorkel and they can use that to suck fresh water into their body. So that's just kind of a nice adaptation to have to living where they live. All right, the next group in this category is going to be um, cephalopoda. So cephalopoda is going to translate to head foot. Cephalo means head, poda means foot. And so this is going to be the octopus, the squid, the cuttlefish, um, all of those little guys. I don't know if I have a picture of yeah, and the Nautilus. Yeah, so these guys are pretty neat too. And um, these guys are extremely advanced. First of all, they're going to have um, a closed circulatory system, so that's more advanced. They're also going to have a brain that's very, very well developed. And they can use it to do really cool stuff, and I'm going to splice a video in here where you can see it. Um, but basically, they can see their surroundings and they can change their color and their shape and their texture in order to kind of blend in with the environment. And so um, these guys are just super awesome creatures. I just find them amazing. And what um, I love to tell my students about is there was a case where they actually had um, these people who were saying, yeah, we saw this hermit crab and we, you know, couldn't believe how beautiful it was. And then we saw the sea star and... So they were thinking this is a new species, but when they actually went through and looked at it, it was all the same species of octopus that was just mimicking these guys to try and, um, you know, get away from predators. So um, these are some pictures of the guys. Um, this is that octopus pretending to be a hermit crab. So not only has it changed its shape, but it also changes its behavior, which is cool. Um, here's one, the same species pretending to be a sea star. Here's that same species pretending to be a sea snake, so he's put his tentacles together. And then here's one trying to look like a flounder or some sort of flatfish. That's all one octopus that can do all those crazy things. So you'll see that in this video. Um, I'll actually post it um, next in um, D2L, but I highly recommend you see it. I'm probably going to show you in class anyway just because it's so cool.